Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program, and my New York Jets are gonna go to five and one this Sunday. I'm not gonna waste any time on it. Going right into the prediction. New York Jets, 22, Denver Broncos, 16. Big game in Denver. We're gonna win it, pumped. We continue with the American versus the world throwdown. Uh, I've done a nice job this week predicting the wines uh, that would be American and non-American. This may be the toughest one because I do find that a lot of American producers do get a little Australian. We're going Syrah, Aussie versus California. Let's see who wins this. I'm excited about this battle. It could be a big battle. And as you guys know, I've been critical of Australian wines in the past as they got too fruit bomby, but then I went to Australia to a lot of stuff that wasn't and I found newfound respect for Australian wines in general. On color, it's gonna be tough. I'm not gonna be able to do what I did for the uh, white burgundy tasting. So let's get into wine number one. All right, wine number one. Let's give it a little sniffy sniff. Wow, very hedonistic news. Big raspberry spiciness. Big black pepper coming through. Big fruit. It is not a bashful wine. Okay, let's go over here. This has a more clear kind of coloring, if that can be said. This is the Australian wine. <laughs> this is the California wine. I'm just saying, because this gets really over the top. Almost like dessert wine-like, and just reminds me of a lot of Australian wines I've had in the past. Could be wrong, very, very licorice, melted down Twizzlers and, uh, and runts, like, you know, strawberry runts, very candied flavored nose, uh, and a little hint of like fortified port-like nuances on the nose. Let's try this first. Wow, this is gonna be tough. It's just like I thought. This is very big and bold as well. I don't really like this wine so much. Um, oof. There's some minerality. There's uh, some inkiness. Blackberry jam flavors coming through. No mid palate. Finishes kind of almost um, salty. Um, and that's that crushed rock minerality, which is not the worst thing in the world. Really, it's not. Go over here real quick. Well, this is dessert wine. Hey. Ah oh, man, this sits this and this episode sits the whole weekend. So if it's the first time you're tuning in, you just randomly found me on Google, things like that nature. This is a really tough episode, I apologize. Neither one of these wines are exciting me. I'm not excited about where Syrah is in these two parts of the world, clearly, and at least on this little sampling. Again, I'm really willing to like bet the franchise on it. I think I'm gonna go three for three, Mop, on, on this week's American versus World Brown Bag Challenge. I would be dumbfounded, would question everything in my life if this wasn't from Australia and this was from California. Neither of them excited me. There's some things I like about this better. It's cleaner. This is just disjointed. It doesn't know what it is. It's kind of like this. This is a 16-year-old kid that has no idea where it's going or what it's doing or who he or she is doing some good things, some bad things, just lost. This guy just knows he's a jerk and it owns it and you gotta like the authenticity of it. This is in your face, bam. This is fruit. This is a bomb, this is candy-like. There's a lot of people that are gonna like this. It's rich, it's bold, it's over the top, but it gets very close to dessert wine. And that to me in general is a no-no for red wine. Neither of these wines really excite me. I bet you this wine scored like 92, 93, 94 points. This is a very Parkerized style of wine. Very big, bold, Robert Parker's great wine critic. He knows his style, he likes it. This is the style he likes. Jay Miller, I could see giving this a 93, 94 point score. To me, this is a little bit more traditional, good solid kind of like toned down Syrah, but is lost. Just can't find its way, no mid palate, the finish sucks.
just never does it. I don't even know what to do with these wines. Um, I'm gonna. I like this style better. This style, this wine is made better in its style. I'm gonna score both of them. An 83. So that's that. Uh, with the slight edge to the person that did it better for what they are because I can see a lot of people liking this and giving him 90. So, second place today is the California wine, I think. Yep. Arno Roberts, 2008 Syrah, 91 points, Josh Reynolds, 30 bucks, 1,200 cases made. I've been a fan of this producer in the past. Did not like this effort. Totally disagree with Josh Reynolds. Did not bring it to me at all. And with 83 points from Australia, did a good job with the, Ma, you impressed with the palette? I was on point. You, not, I mean, it wasn't so, so hard. But I'll take it. 91 points, Jay Miller. 32 US dollars. Aged in 18 months and new and French oak. The Marquis Phillips Shiraz number nine. And uh, that makes sense because uh, that's what I've been scoring these Marquis Phillips style wines lately. I just, here's my problem. I can find this wine for $15. I can take us to wine that's $15 that brings this hedonistic over the top thing and I wanna be on the right side of history. I do believe people look back at these videos in 15 years and be like, he was right on this style. It's just makeup. If me and Mott wore enough, if Mott shaved, and we wore the same makeup, we'd look the same. If we dressed, if we made makeup like Kiss, we'd look the same, in theory. Even though we look very, very different. That's what I believe these over-oaked, over-extracted, almost dessert port-like wines that come from Australia tend to do. That is my big problem with oak and the implications of over-oaked, over-extracted, over-the-top wines. This wine, I just don't see what Jay Reynolds saw. And I agree with him all the time. We have a very similar rating course. I just didn't see it this time. That being said, I've been a fan of Arno Roberts in the past. Maybe it was just me today, I don't know, but not feeling it. Very disappointing way to end Friday. I apologize. I'm super sorry. It is what it is. Question of the day, uh, what are your weekend plans, wine-wise? Alcohol-wise, throw me a little martini and a little beer action. I wanna know what people are doing. You watching a big Florida State game with a beer? You, you having a wine party? Is it your cousin's birthday and you're gonna drink, bring over a bottle of Kendall Jackson Chardonnay just to stick it to him? You. With a little bit of me, Jets baby, five and one, Mott, we're changing the wine world.